So in today's video, I'm going to answer this one specific question that you might have as a store owner. So here I am on a demo website that I've set up for this video. And let's just say that this is your WooCommerce website. So your customer goes to your website, they click on your shop page, they go down, they add an album to cart, they go down, they add the polo to their cart, they view your cart page, they go down, they proceed to checkout, they put in their details, they go down, they say, yes, I want to add this cap as an upsell to their order. So now they're purchasing three items from your store. They go down and they click place order now. So once your customer does this using the funnel kit plugin, they land on this page here, which is an upsell. So here you're upselling them a hoodie. So your customer could go, you know what? I do want a hoodie. So you charged their credit card previously on the WooCommerce checkout page. When your customer clicks this button now, you have their card details from the checkout page. You've just charged their credit card a second time. And now you're showing them another upsell. So keep in mind, we've charged their credit card twice. If we go down and your customer might say, you know what? Yes, I do want to add this belt to my order. So now your customer clicks this button. You charge your credit, your customer's credit card a third time, and then they land on your thank you page. So as a store owner, you've been able to sell more of your products to your customer in a targeted way using sales funnels and the funnel kit plugin for WordPress. And your customer has been able to buy more of your products. So you've made more profit, your customers bought more of your products. But what does this actually look like in the admin area of your WooCommerce website? Because if we go back to our dashboard and then we go to WooCommerce and orders, here's that order that we just made. But you can see we have a bit of text over here and it's two different numbers. So what does that mean? If we click into the order, you as a store owner, you can see that this order is in processing and you can see that all the items that your customer added to their cart, the order bump, the upsells that they said yes to, they're all listed here, but you also have a timeline over here. How do you use that? If you go down, we also have the different transactions for the upsells broken out into their own line items here. How do you use that as a store owner? And then also, how do you go and process refunds? If you charge your credit card, your customer's credit card three times, how do you process refunds using the admin area here for the funnel kit plugin? So that's what we're going to look at in this video today. So what I want to do now is jump to a demo website that I've set up, go through our checkout process, add some upsells and downsells, complete that purchase process. And as we're going through, through the checkout experience, we're going to be jumping between the front end of the website and the back end of the website. And I'm going to show you how the order is updated and created as people say yes to your upsells and downsells. So you can get an idea of how you would manage this as a store owner. It's a really interesting video. It's something that I didn't quite understand until I bought WooFunnels and played around and tested it. And yeah, basically this video is going to save you time and give you a better understanding to see if it is right for you, the funnel kit, aka WooFunnels plugin. So here we are on the front of the website and we're going to go to the shop page and let's go down and let's just say we're going to add a polo. So we'll go add to cart and we might also go up and we're going to add one more item. We might add the album. So we'll add that to cart. Now we're going to go to the cart page and then we'll go proceed to checkout. And now we're on our WooCommerce checkout page. Now, if you're wondering why this looks so neat and tidy, this is another feature of the funnel kits plugin. So it allows you to customize your checkout page. I'm going to drop a link to a video that I did where I show you how to go and set this up inside WooCommerce. So that's a whole separate video. I cover it very in depth. So I'm not going to touch on it just now, but just know that this is possible using the funnel kit plugin as well. So we're going to go down and we have this order bump here. Again, another feature of the funnel kit plugin. So we have our polo album and I'm going to say yes to this order bump. So I'm going to click this. Okay. Now that updates my cart up there. So this is all looking good. So again, remember you're a customer here. We're going through this. So the test gateway here by funnel kit, this this is just allows us as store owners to go out and test that our checkout's working how we want it. But your users will obviously use Stripe or PayPal or whatever else you're using there. But for now, I don't have them connected in my demo website. We're just going to proceed with the test gateway. So now that this is all looking good, I'm going to say place order now. So I'll click this button. It's going to say processing order. And now we land on our first upsell. So this is the first thing that we need to do. We're going to jump to the admin area because the order has obviously been created. So let's go up to here and we're going to go to the dashboard and then 
then I'll go to WooCommerce and orders. And here's our order, so 19 seconds ago. So the Funnel Kit plugin, when you install it, it registers a new WooCommerce order uh, status called primary order accepted. Now this is the uh, intermediary, intermedia, it's that temporary WooCommerce order status until your customer goes from your checkout form and reaches the thank you page. So along the way, we have our upsells and downsells like this, where if they click this button, we're gonna add this product to their order and charge their credit card for a second time. And so the primary order accepted status is the status that it has until the customer gets to the end of this funnel, reaches the thank you page. So let's click into this order. Okay, so remember we've only gone through the checkout form at this stage. So this order has been created. Again, we have the primary order accepted status over here. The polo and album were added to the cart from the shop page. And then the order bump here is the cap and that's been added there as well. So as far as we're concerned as store owners, let's just say for example here, we were using Stripe and our customer purchased using Stripe. This is one Stripe charge. We've charged their credit card once at this point in time in our Stripe dashboard, there would be one Stripe transaction for this user and it would have these three items. Now over here, we also have a timeline. So we can see that this user has obviously purchased here and then uh, it's gone from pending status to primary order accepted as expected. So remember pending is when we haven't taken payment. That's just a, a default way that WooCommerce works. So it's usually when somebody gets to the checkout form and they click the um, confirm payment button. Let's just say, for example, their credit card details are incorrect. It still will create the order, but just puts it in pending status and the user can go and try and purchase that again. So I went from pending to primary order accepted, which means we charge their credit card. And now we can also see that they we've initiated the funnel upsell. We've, we've initiated the funnel kit upsells and downsells process. And the user is currently viewing the offer for the hoodie. Okay, so that is it there. So I'll quickly just show you how these are set up. So if we go to funnel kit and then store checkout, you can see we have our checkout page and the order bump for the cap. And then they go from top to bottom. So then we're gonna show them offers. So upsells and downsells, and then they go to the thank you page. And our upsells, if I click into here, you can see our first upsell is for the hoodie, which is what we're currently showing this customer. And then if they say yes to this upsell, they would go to the thank you page. But what I've also done here for this demo is I've set up a downsell for a belt. So you can see it says downsell here. So if I click back to the hoodie, it's an upsell. And if I go to the belt, it's a downsell. And your user will only see a downsell if they say no to an upsell. So we're gonna try and trigger this belt over here. So back here, I'm gonna say, no, I don't want this hoodie. And now we're shown the downsell for the belt. So if we go back to our dashboard here, so here's that initial order. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna reload the page. So reload the page. Okay, so we haven't added anything to our order because remember we rejected that upsell for the hoodie. So we haven't gone and charged the credit card again we haven't added anything to this order. So the only thing that's changed at this point in time should be the timeline. So again, we can see that we initiated the funnel here. We saw the hoodie and then we rejected the hoodie and now we're viewing the belt. Okay, and the order status is still primary order accepted. Now let's go back to here and let's just say, yes, I will accept the belt. So add this to our order. Now, when we click this button, what's really powerful, and this is why funnels and funnel kits such a really good plugin for WordPress, Press and WooCommerce is that from our main checkout form, we've captured the credit card details of this user and stored it in their session with Stripe, for example. So when we click to do to get this belt, we get the credit card details from the session and we can just charge the user's credit card again without them having to enter the credit card details again. This is why it's so good. So let's say yes, add this to our order. So our customer or your customer would click this, you would charge their credit card again, it updates their order, it's been successful and then we reach the thank you page. So let's go back here and now let's reload the page after doing that. And now a couple of things have changed. So let's go through it. So if we go down, the status of the order is now processing. So it went from primary order accepted and then we went all through the funnel, reached the thank you page and now it's into processing status. Processing meaning you're a store owner, you need to process this order, you need to fulfill it, get it to the customer. So if we go over to here, the next thing is the timeline has updated 
activated. So from the checkout form, we initiated the upsells and downsells. We saw the hoodie, so we viewed it, we rejected the hoodie, we saw the belt, and then we accepted the belt. The belt was converted, and then the funnel terminated, meaning the user went all the way to the end and reached the thank you page. So if we go down, you can see that here has also updated. So remember, this was our primary order. Then the order bump was for the cap. That's that small box at the end of the checkout form that we clicked the checkbox. So that's this is one Stripe transaction. And then the belt has been added. Now, if you're ever wondering what's an upsell or downsell, we have this meta data that comes in here. So bump purchase, that's the order bump. Yes, so that helps you know what was the order bump in, when looking at the order. But upstroke purchase, yes. So upstroke is what the funnel kit team referred to the upsells and downsells process. So upstroke purchase, yes. We know upstroke, upsells, downsells. This was added during the upselling process. And again, you can just look at the timeline over here if you're ever unsure. But this meta is very useful. Order bump and upstroke meaning upsell. So the belt was an upsell. Um, the important thing that I want to point out here is that this this is all as line, line items in the order, but there's multiple credit card transactions that happened along the way. So how do you know what was from one transaction where you charged a credit card versus another? If we go down a little bit, this is where that gives us that detail. So one click upsells. So we can see that the belt had this transaction ID, the products were this and the total. So this is really useful if let's just say somebody accidentally um, goes goes through and says yes to an upsell and they email your support team, you need to just refund that upsell. This is where you do it. So if I clicked on refund here, I would just be refunding this upsell. So the maximum that you can refund here is the amount that you took for that transaction. So uh, this here for the belt, $65, this was the second time we build their credit card. So I can only refund from here the $65 for this upsell. If you need to refund the entire order, you could go here, refund refund, see how it's grayed out there. You need to refund each transaction separately. So here we would refund $118, which was for the primary order plus the order bump. This is grayed out. So to refund the upsells and downsells, you need to come down here and you would refund from here. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is what happens if we had multiple upsells and downsells and we charged a user's credit card three times. What would that look like? So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back uh, to our upsells and downsells. So you go, funnel kit and then store checkout. And then here I'm going to go to our upsells. And so we have the hoodie. This is an upsell and the belt was a downsell. I'm actually going to edit this and I'm just going to quickly make this an upsell and click update offer. And then we'll save the changes. So remember your user will see all the upsells, but they only see downsells if a user said no to a prior upsell. So by changing this from a downsell to an upsell, a user will see this upsell no matter if if they say yes or no to this one, then they still see the next upsell, which is the belt. Basically, we're just going to be able to see both of these now. So these are all saved. So let's go back to the front end of our website and let's go to shop. And then I'm going to go through and let's add the same products. So I think we had the album and then down here we had the polo and then I'll go view cart and then we'll go proceed to checkout. And then I'll go down and say yes to the cap. And then I'm going to place the order. We charge their credit card one time. We store them in the session. We land on the first upsell. I'm going to say yes to this hoodie. We charge their credit card a second time. And let's go back here and I'm going to go to orders. And then here on the order screen, I'll point out here as well. So it's in primary order accepted as we expected. Over here, we have $98 total for this user so far. And $53 has been from the Woo Funnels plugin, aka Funnel Kit, showing upsells and downsells and the user saying yes to that. So if we click into this, we can see that overall, it's $98 for the primary order with the order bump plus the upsell. So that's $98. And remember how it said Woo Funnels is $53. That is the order bump, which was $8 plus the $45 for the upsell. So basically, if you go back here, orders, the way that I like to use this in my business is I can see overall $98 I made from this customer. And if I didn't have this Woo Funnels plugin installed, I would have missed out on getting $50 dollars because by installing the Woo Funnels plugin and it showing upsells and downsells in certain places, I've made an extra $53 from this order. So, so it's actually a very useful feature and one that I use a lot in my business. Now, if we go down here, 
uh, we can see the timeline. So I uh, went through the checkout process, primary order accepted, viewed the hoodie, accepted the hoodie, converted. Now they're viewing the belt, go down here. We have our primary order up there, go down and the hoodie is broken out as its own transaction ID. If we're using Stripe, this would be a Stripe transaction ID. And we can see the variant that the product had there. So let's go back here and let's say yes to the belt. So this is charging their credit card for the third time. And then we reach the thank you page. So if we go back to our order and I'll just go up and reload the page, it goes from primary order accepted to processing the funnel over here. So they viewed the belt, accepted the belt, converted, and then funnels terminated. Go down, this lists all the products that the user bought. So again, there's a primary order. There's the first upsell, there's the order bump, and there's the second upsell there. So upstroke, upstroke, yes, yes. So overall from this customer, we made $163. And if we go down, we can see that the second transaction for the first upsell is here. And the third time we build their credit card, that transaction ID is there. And if you need to refund this, um, I did miss out on this before. If you go up here and we click refund, see where it says it's recommended to refund the upsell offers before the order. So you go over to here and let's just say you'd refund the 65. So we've refunded 65 if we go up. So it's minus 65. And then let's just say we need to refund here. And then we do 45 and go OK. And that's refunded. Go down. So they're both refunded. So if we go up, we can see that uh, it's broken out here. So minus one, minus one. And then go down, refund. And we would refund the remaining. So we do 53. Go refund via test gateway. Okay. And that is done there. So now this is in the refunded status. And if you go down here also, it updates. So the offer hoodie has been refunded, uh, the belt refunded. So it does add onto the timeline here as well. And you also have the order notes. Um, I didn't go through these before, but pending the primary order accepted, they accepted the offer here. They accepted the second upsell, change from primary order accepted to pending payment, and then straight to processing. I'm not quite sure why it does that. It doesn't go from primary order accepted straight to processing. That's just what it does. And then we refunded and then we refunded and then we refunded and then it changed its order status from processing to refunded. So if you want to see more of my content like this, don't forget to subscribe and also check out this video on the screen now. It's really going to help you increase your sales with your WooCommerce website. So I'll leave that video here.